In this video, we will discuss on the instruments which are used in septoplasty. My name is Dr. Tariq Zahid Khan and I am faculty member at Dow Medical College, Dow University of Health Sciences and Civil Hospital, Karachi. This is the surgical trolley for septoplasty. It contains Freer's dissector, Tilly's forceps, turbinectomy scissors, Lux forceps suction nozzles, different type of forceps and different types of nasal speculum. The patient is positioned supine with the head end of the table is raised at 15 degrees. A ring is placed under the head of the patient and the head is tilted slightly towards the surgeon. Different types and sizes of nasal speculums are used in septoplasty. Common nasal speculum pattern include Beckman, Cottle, Haley Teak, the Hardy, Bivalve, Cleans and Viana speculum. The self-retaining nasal speculum are available with spring-loaded handles with a self-retaining screw to secure them in an open position. This diagnostic nasal equipment helps in widening the opening of a nostril so that the inside of the nose can be clearly and easily visible by the surgeon. Use of nasal speculum produces a space between the mucosa and the cartilage within the nasal cavity. Nasal speculum is used in certain nasal operations, especially minor operations. Nasal specula are further useful in the diagnosis. The nasal speculum is composed of two parts, handle and cone. The handles of nasal speculum resemble typical pliers or scissors. The tip of this device is cone shaped. The cone portion of the nasal speculum varies in sizes. The size to be used depends on the age of the patient. The nasal speculum is hinged so that when the handles of the nasal speculum are squeezed together, the blades spread laterally, exposing, enabling easy examination by the physician. The theodicum nasal speculum has two nasal flanges. The size of these flanges varies depending on the age of the patient. These two flanges are inserted into the nostril to widen the nasal cavity, permitting an enhanced view of the structures inside the nose. The Cleans nasal speculum is used in septoplasty, anterior rhinoscopy, polypectomy, turbinate reduction surgeries, anterior nasal packing and nasal foreign body removal. A number 15 Swan Morton sterile stainless steel surgical blade and number 3 Bard Parker handle is used to make the incision. Number 15 blade is popularly used for septoplasty. It has a sharp tip, a small and curved cutting edge. An unattached and replaceable blade is used. A key-like slot at the angled projecting base securely locks the blade to the handle by sliding the end of the handle in or out of the slot. The spine of the blade is unsharpened and rigid edged. These are almost always made of high carbon or hardened tempered stainless steel to establish absolute control. To establish absolute control, the number 15 scalpel is held like a pen with the handle grasped between the thumb and the third and fourth fingers with the index finger placed over the dorsal part of the blade. While making the incision, the nose must be stabilized with a speculum in the non-dominant hand to prevent cattle tracking and bird prints and so on. The surgeon must carefully with absolute control punctures through the inferior part of the mucosa. The blade crosses through the mucosa into the hydrodissected subperichondrial space. The incision progresses from inferior to superior. The blood from the incision drops down and the field remains visible. 
At this point, one must be very carefully visualize the pearly white settle cartilage and should not cut through the cartilage. Knowledge of this 15 number blade, its correct usage would aid the ENT surgeons to make better understanding and use this tool towards the betterment of their practice. Freer's elevator was designed by Otto Freer of Chicago. While he developed this elevator, he relied heavily on dental instrument designs. This instrument, a fairly simple one, will enable the surgeon to elevate mucoperiosteal flap of nasal septum during septoplasty and submucosal resection of nasal septum. This instrument has a dull finish in order to prevent it from unnecessary reflecting light during the surgical procedure. Freer's dissector comes in two versions, that is sharp and blunt ones. Sharp one is ideally used to initially elevate the mucopericondrial flap. The same instrument has both blunt and sharp edges on either ends. All the surgeon has to do it to reverse the instrument to get the desired effect. It also comes in various lengths. Freer's elevator is best used to perform dissection at the interface between a hard structure and soft tissue. Freer's in fact used this instrument to dissect nail out of the nail bed and also to strip periosteum from the bone. Freer's dissector is also used in urological surgery. Two instruments can be used together to retract soft tissue prior to the dissection of renal tumors. Freer's dissector can also be used to create a soft tissue tunnel beneath the rib. An ENT surgeon uses the Freer's elevator to elevate mucopericondrial nasal septal flap to medialize middle turbinate during face surgeries to strip periosteum from mastoid bone during mastoid surgeries to elevate tympanometal flap for harvesting graft for displacement of inferior turbinate in entrostomy, for elevating canal skin and cartilage perichondrium in mastoid surgeries. Freer's dissector is also used to perform uncinectomy. Freer's dissector has undergone various modifications. One useful modification being attachment of suction portal which can be connected to a suction apparatus. Turbinectomy scissors are 6 and half inches long. These are angled in such a way that the visual field remains clearly visible during the use of this tool. Different designs of turbinectomy scissors can be used to cut the cartilage and bony septum in a horizontal direction. The ends of turbinectomy scissors are blunt to avoid injury to the delicate structures. After cutting the cartilage and bony septum, lux forceps are used. Lux forceps are designed to remove the tissue or bone material around the bony nasal septum during rhinoplasty and nasal surgeries. These forceps have unique design allows the surgeon to easily manipulate the tissue without causing damage or trauma to the surrounding areas. Lux forceps has a fenestrated old tip with sharp cup-shaped blades to hold grasp and cut the cartilage and bone of the septum. It resembles to tonsil holding forceps, but the edges are smooth and tonsil holding forceps. Their job is to just hold tissue, whereas the edges of the tips are sharper in the case of lux forceps because they have to do some cutting. So the lux forceps are mainly used for cutting. 
Lux forceps are almost 8 inches long. These are pairs of angled forceps. Lux forceps has a small hole at its tip. Lux forceps also prevent crushing of tissues while taking biopsy, hence crush artifacts are avoided. Lux forceps are used for septal surgeries to take biopsies to remove polyps from nasal cavities and in cardiac luck operation on the maxillary sinuses. A fish tail chisel is placed at the base of bony spur and hammered with a metallic mallet. The fish tail chisel gets its name from its distinct shape resembling the tail of a fish. It typically has a thin, flat and straight blade. The blade may be slightly curved near the tip to allow for controlled cutting of nasal septum. It is typically made of hardened steel which ensures durability. It has a handle that provides a comfortable grip for the surgeon for precision. The metallic mallet is typically made of solid metal such as stainless steel providing strength and durability. Its head is usually round or rectangular, allowing for broad and even distribution of force during striking the chisel. The solid metal construction of the mallet head absorbs and transfers force effectively, reducing rebound and minimizing the impact on the surgeon's hand. The placement of the gouges should not be directed downwards to avoid hard palatal injury and post-operative oro-nasal fistula. Tilly's nasal dressing forceps are larger than Hartman's forceps. Tilly's forceps have serrated tip and box joint. These have typically long cylinder and curved blades near the handles. The curved blades help in grasping and positioning nasal dressings or packing material. These are typically made of stainless steel, ensuring durability and resistance to corrosion. Tilly's forceps are used in all nasal operations for nasal packing and removal of small bony and cartilaginous pieces and foreign bodies.